Hello everybody, Sean Keenan here, and in this tutorial for Tuts Plus, I'm going to show you my method, which is a very simple method for creating and rendering characters and objects inside of ZBrush for presentations that you want to show, whether it be online uh, or to prospective employers. So we're going to try to keep the, the method simple here. Um, we're not going to set up anything that has too many lights too many colors uh, or too complex here at least we're going to try so let's go ahead and get started here um, I'm definitely going to give you guys my UI because as you can see I don't use the standard UI inside of ZBrush I use a custom UI so it's going to make it easier for you to follow along if you have my UI file so uh, once you go ahead and load that you can just simply come up here and uh, go into preferences config and just load the UI uh, that I'll give you let's go ahead and get started here uh, we need to definitely use the or what I like to use is the standard ZBrush materials and then we'll go ahead and work that way so let's come in here and just apply a standard ZBrush material and we're just going to use the basic material 2 here okay and this is going to require that we try to dial in uh, not only our materials, our lights, and also our render settings. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, pull our render menu off here and just post it on the right side. Okay, so let's first take a look here uh, at dialing in our material. Because that this is probably going to be um, the most important part um, just outside of the lights. So let's come in here and just take a look at our material tab. And we're just going to take and modify here. So you can see that there are a lot of different settings in here. But really all we need to go ahead and focus on is our diffuse, our specular, and our ambient occlusion, or our ambient. Okay, so first things I want to go ahead and do is reset um, our specular curve here to the standard. So you can see once you do that, the specular gets a little bit um, more blown out and a little bit larger. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this and take the intensity down here. Okay. Because I don't want necessarily that much specular. I at least want a little bit of it. We're also going to take our diffuse here. Try and see what 50 looks like. And we'll just you know continually drop down here. So I think that maybe 25 should at least give us a good starting point here and I'm going to go over here to the right and open up our BPR render passes I'm going to go ahead and hit a BPR here to see what we have um, from the start here so you can see that this doesn't necessarily take too long to crank out that BPR but you'll notice here that our model in the image that comes out from our BPR is fairly small so what I want to go ahead and do is just hit our anti-aliased half size. This will give us the model size that's in this image. And then I'm just going to go ahead here and scale it up. Okay. And we'll go ahead and hit BPR again. And you'll notice that that model gets a little bit larger. Okay. So right away you can see where our model render is actually starting to already look fairly decent. So I'm just going to come in here, close our modifier tab, take a look here at our light tab. So we're just going to try and dial in some of our lights now. So we'll take our initial light. And you can always go ahead and turn this off, but once you turn this off, you can see that the material doesn't retain any of the lighting information. So we're going to use this light, but we're also going to be using the light cap system here. So we'll go ahead and turn this light back on. And we're just going to pull this down to be in the middle here. Okay. I'm going to take some of the ambient out there. And maybe up the intensity just a little bit. Okay. Let's go ahead and do another BPR here. After I turn our distance to 50. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that in half. Let's take a look at the image that comes out here. Okay, so this is, you know, looking fairly decent so far. I'm going to go in here and create some light caps. Okay, so that this isn't necessarily going to be 
uh, too complex, let's just go ahead and create a new light. Okay, and you can see that that's indicated by the little red dot here. And we can always adjust the placement here. And there are a couple settings here that we can always adjust. Obviously, we have the strength. And if we go ahead and turn that up, you're going to see where the model gets blown out. Okay, so we'll just try to keep this low. Our aperture, which is going to be the exposure size of the light, or how much of the model is getting lit. And our opacity. If you can see what that's doing, let me go ahead and just turn the strength up here. So that you can see where you're going to have a lot of control to go ahead and uh, adjust your light systems. You can always adjust the fall off as well. So let's go ahead and maybe turn our aperture up here. Uh, maybe not that large um, because a full 180 is going to be completely around the model. And I don't necessarily want the entire light to be all the way around the model. So maybe go 125 here. And a lot of this is just going to be experimentation. You know, do a BPR. Uh, adjust the setting and we'll just simply work from there okay so at this point um, I think we definitely need to adjust our shadows here so we'll go ahead and just pull all that shadow information out on our light cap okay so now you can see where it's a more even lighting and we do have at least some shadow but we don't have a large amount of shadow Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just pull this down a little bit and create a new light. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that one up, jump back to our light one here, and replace the position here. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our light two and place this into a position that I'm going to be happy with. Okay, we'll go ahead and also pull the shadow information off of that. Just adjust our strength here. And if you Watching the viewport, as I adjust the strength here, you're going to see where that light's going to get um, a little bit larger and more intense. Okay. So with that brought in, let's go ahead and do another BPR here. Okay. So that's looking um, a little bit better. I think we could probably adjust the aperture there as well. Turn the intensity down there a little bit. Okay, so you can see now where we're really starting to get that detail information here to come through. And I think I want to maybe go ahead and dial in our material just a little bit more. So let's come up here to our material tab. Click our modifiers. And maybe lighten this up just a little bit here. Go ahead and pull our specular down a little bit more. Okay. Let's go ahead and run another BPR here. And the shortcut for that is Shift R. Okay, so I think that this material and um, lighting system is looking fairly decent so far. Let's go ahead and create our third light here in our light caps. And I'm just trying to grab that red one and not the original number one there. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull the intensity down here. Adjust our aperture there. Take our shadow amount. Uh, I don't want too much shadow. Um, and you can always adjust that in the BPR shadow as well. But you can see where you also have a slot for a texture and an alpha. And if you want to go ahead and throw a texture in here, I'll show you what will happen. Okay, so you can see where our texture is coming into the light cap representation window here. And if I turn the intensity up here, you can see where that will come through on the light. Let me go ahead and do a BPR to show you what's going to happen here. And I don't know if you can actually see that um, color or that texture actually on the model. So let me go ahead and adjust the color here. So now you can see where that 
texture is basically coming through the model. And if I go ahead and said pull that down, you can see where that texture is going to be coming through the light and getting reflected onto the model or placed onto the model. And you can see where you would have a lot of um, ability to add, you know, something like sky lighting information and whatnot onto the model like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off. Make sure I turn our color back here to gray. Okay, and definitely have to pull down that intensity. And I think we did have 0.09, if I do believe correctly. So let's go ahead and do a BPR of this to take a look and see what happens. Okay. So our material here in our model is um, looking just about where I want it. So we're going to come over here and start adjusting some of our BPR render settings. So I can simply just minimize that and we'll take a look here. For me personally, I like to turn the detail levels up to 3. This way I'm going to capture all the detail that's in the model. I'm not going to go ahead and turn on the ambient occlusion for right now because whenever I go ahead and do uh, BPRs with this on, the render time is going to, going to increase exponentially. So for right now I'm just going to go ahead and leave this off. I'm going to turn on our depth cue, soft RGB, and I'm also going to turn on our soft Z here. Come down here to shadow, our BPR shadow, and I'm going to turn the strength here, our global strength, from 0.75 to 0.25. Also turn our floor shadow strength, but even though we don't have a floor in here, I'm still going to turn this down to 0.1 because I don't necessarily want such a hard shadow here. So let's go ahead and do another BPR of this. Okay. So you can see where the shadows have really um, come down a large amount. And if you take a look at our BPR shadow pass, you can see that. Okay. I'm also going to turn our sharpness up here to 25. Do another BPR. Take a look at that. And that's starting to look fairly decent here. Okay. So let's take a look here. At our anti-aliasing. Anti I'm going to turn the blur down here to 60. I'm going to turn our size up here to 4. Our super sample up here to 3. Okay. Go ahead and do another BPR render pass of this. And now we're starting to really see the model come together. Okay, and if we take a look here at our BPR render pass, as you can see, and let's go ahead here and do our ambient occlusion, and I need to make sure that we turn this on in our render properties. Okay. The global strength here, um, now you should try and adjust this in small amounts, because this can get a little bit intense so if you wanted to make it strong and say one and let me go ahead and just move that model so that we can get a render pass of that on you're gonna see whenever I hit the BPR button that this is going to take a decent amount of time to kick through so you can see where this is taking a little bit of time and I'm just gonna go ahead and pause it here while that kicks through Okay, so now that has kicked on through for me. But you can see definitely where the ambient occlusion is really coming into play for our model. And it's starting to make our model look just that much better. And if we take a look here at our ambient occlusion pass, you can see where we have all that ambient occlusion information there. And it's going to allow us to, if we wanted to, comp inside of Photoshop. Okay, so let's come down here and just continue to adjust our ambient occlusion here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this up uh, on our resolution to 1500. Even though that's a, a fairly, I would say, high number. Um, for me personally, I like to use a high number because it's just going to make my um, renders just that much better. Okay. 
and we'll go ahead and take a look at our anti-aliasing filter. Go ahead and crush it out to the full size there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do a final BPR here. And I'll probably have to go ahead and pause this once it starts kicking through because I know that it's probably going to take a little bit of time with all those settings maxed out. So let's go ahead and hit BPR. I'm going to go ahead and pause it here real quick. Okay, so with that BPR cranked out, you can see now where our model is uh, fairly pretty. In the overall setting and rendering here, you can see where it's capturing all that detailed information. So with that done, what I want to go ahead and do is just export all of the render passes out that we have here. I'm going to show you a neat way to go ahead and comp these into in Photoshop. Okay, but let's say that we not only wanted one pass where we have um, the image basically rotated one way, we're going to want that model to be rotated a couple different ways. Okay, I'll show you how to go ahead and do that here real quick. So I just go on ahead and created a folder on my desktop, and I'm going to make a couple different folders here. Okay, so we're go we'll call this the pose one. And we'll just do two poses here. Okay. So all we need to do is just come up here to our render pass. We'll click on each individual image here. Desktop. New folder. Pose 1. This is the BPR color. The BPR depth. Our BPR shadow. Our BPR ambient occlusion. You can always BPR your mask, which would be your alpha channel. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do another render, which is going to give us another pose here. I'm going to go ahead and hit BPR here. And pause the, the video for a second while it gets done. Okay, so now that that has gone ahead and BPR'd for us, I'm going to go ahead and save this pose as well. Okay. Or you can always just hit um, Control alt print screen print screen and take this into Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and export our images here out and then in the next lesson we will go ahead and begin our comping info inside of Photoshop to go ahead and showcase our model. So let me go ahead and just export these couple last passes out and we'll go ahead and call it a pause or an end for this lesson and then in the next lesson we'll go ahead and come back and comp inside of Photoshop so that we can present our models. So come on back.